Today, we are going to demonstrate the best practice for maintaining and rebuilding a Jurgerson Series 20 armored reflex gauge. The tools you will need to pr perform this rebuild are a calibrated torque wrench with three quarter inch socket, a brass scraper, molly coat or similar lubricant, um, glass rebuild kit consisting of new glass and gaskets, and then a pair of calipers. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get your gauge on a clean flat surface. Um, as you can see here, I've got a gauge already prepared. Um, when you're doing this on your gauge, you want to make sure that you release the tension from the nuts uh, starting from the outside and moving inwards. And the reason that you want to do that is you want to release the tension the same way you put it on. So you want to prevent the glass from splintering. Uh, so I'll remove the nuts now. Remove the rating tag. Um, this is a Jurgerson rating tag on the side here. You have a lot of important information like your order number, the spare part kit number, the material of construction, what type of glass was used, what type of gasket material you used, and then uh, the bolt torque for if you have to rebuild that. So a lot of inf important information on that tag. All right, so now that I got all the nuts pulled off the gauge, I'm gonna remove the cover. Um, you can see here that there's this recessed surface where this gasket sits on the cover. Uh, that's what's known as the cushion gasket. The cushion gasket's a non-wetted part. Um, so we'll pull that out, pull the gasket out, set the cover here. Um, you also want to remove the glass. Uh, you'll notice that this is a piece of reflex glass. So the uh, little molded prisms there on the inside always have to face down in the chamber. Um, and then we'll get the bolts out of the way. Um, you'll see that there's a gasket in the uh, chamber here, and that's what's called the seal gasket. That seal gasket is a wetted part, so you're going to want to get rid of that. Uh, in fact, if this gauge has been in service for a while, that might be stuck on there. Um, so we always use a brass scraper to try and get that off. So, All right, now that I got my gauge fully disassembled, you want to make sure that you uh, throw away your glass and gaskets. It's important to note uh, that even though they might not appear worn, the gaskets can harden over time, and the glass uh, can have points of concentration that you can't see. So it's a point of emphasis. You always want to throw away the glass and gaskets and use new. So that's why I have this rebuild kit here. Next thing you want to do is you want to inspect your bolting. So uh, you know it's best practice to always replace the bolts when you're rebuilding a glass gauge. But at the very least, you want to put that bolt on there and make sure that it can spin freely down the entire length of the thread. And the reason for that is, is you want to make sure that there's no hang up because if there is hang up it can affect your bolt torque for when you're tightening the gauge down. So since this is a, a new gauge I'm not going to replace the bolts. But uh, Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you inspect that chamber. Uh, recess surface there you want to make sure there's no pitting or gouging that needs to be even and flat. Uh, if it is, if it, you do notice that there's gouges on it you can take one or two skim cuts on a milling machine, um, but a minimum material thickness of 0 .100 inches between the through bore and the recessed surface there has to be maintained. So that's, uh, you want to make sure that you measure that dimension there of the through bore. You got to make sure that there's enough material there. Hopefully you guys can see that in the video. Um, so, you know, we don't ever recommend welding or sandblasting on the ceiling surface of the chamber. Uh, the gasket surface flatness must be maintained within 0 .002 inches, and all of that's outlined in our IOM. Uh, so you also want to repeat that process for the recessed surface of the cover. So now that we're done inspecting the gauge and we've established that everything's okay and we're ready, we'll start rebuilding. So with a reflex gauge, uh, you always want to make sure you rebuild from the cover kind of upside down. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put a gasket, the cushion gasket, in the cover, and then I'll take my new piece of glass and I'll make sure the ridges are pointed up when I place it in the cover. And then I'll place my gasket in the ceiling surface of the chamber and I'll place that right on the glass like so. Um, you want to make sure that that glass is located centrally within that recessed surface. Um, next thing you do is you put your bolts in. 
you'll notice the bolts are snug right up on that chamber. Alright, so now that I got the bolts on there, I'm going to pinch the chamber to the cover so that there's no movement, and then I want to roll it, like so. Um, so now we're ready to put the nuts back on. Uh, you should always make sure that when you're doing this, that you uh, hit the, the bolt threads with some molly coat, <laughs> because uh, you're just trying to you know get, get a good torque value on there. If, if the bolt or nut hangs up on there, it won't give you an accurate torque, torque value. So. Next thing I'll do is uh, I'll put my rating tag on there. We always do one up on the bottom right hand side. Put my rating tag on. My two washers. And then I'll start threading the nuts on finger tight. Um, just so you know, the, the nut here has a flat surface, so you want to make sure that flat surface always goes down on the chamber. Alright, so now that I got all my nuts on this finger tight, uh, I'm going to get my calibrated torque wrench. Since this is a series 20 gauge, the correct torque value to use is 32 foot-pounds, but you start off at 5 foot-pounds and increase in 5 foot-pound increments, um, and that can be found on this rating tag here on the side. So, uh, you know, I'd set this thing to five foot-pounds, and then I'd, I'd basically start in the center, and then you work your way out. So, um, start in the center, go out one, out one more. All right, so I'd do that at five foot-pounds, and then I would increase to 10 foot-pounds, and then 15 foot-pounds, 20 foot-pounds, 25, and then 32 um, to get myself to the proper torque. But now the gauge is rebuilt. Um, just before you install this, all reassembled gauges should be hydro tested for a minimum of five minutes before returning to service. Um, it's recommended that the hydro test pressure is one and a half times the gauge rating as seen on this tag right here. Um, and that pretty much concludes this instructional maintenance video. So for more information, visit our website at www.jergeson.com.